Installing the mounting rail. First off, the insulation for the UFH should be fitted to a flat surface. This is important as the sheet insulation must be fully supported for maximum strength. Tip. Insulation depth and quality should be as required by design or building regulations, whichever is greater. Confirm with your building inspector that the insulation used is correct before proceeding with the installation of UFH. External walls should also be insulated to building standards to prevent heat loss. Preparing the floor. An expansion strip is required to accommodate expansion that occurs within the screed as a result of it heating up. This strip should be fitted around the room's perimeter and taped to the membrane. The joints must then be securely taped over. Extra expansion joints may also be required at doorways and large floor areas. A polyethylene film 0.15mm thick with 80mm overlaps should be placed over the insulation. This barrier prevents the screed from contaminating the insulation. It also stops liquid screeds from flowing into gaps in the insulation, which potentially leads to floating the boards. Multiple circuits. A length of pipe has only a limited capacity to carry heat, so there is a limit to the effective length of a single pipe run circuit. When you have a large room, or the room is a long way from the manifold, it may be necessary to use a number of circuits. Placing the JG manifold centrally to the circuits will greatly reduce the amount or length of circuits needed for a particular installation. This will have a bearing on the cost and performance of a system as well. Installing the circuit. We have shown in the previous video demonstration how to connect to the manifold or one room pack and run the pipework to the room you are working in. The mounting rail has double sided tape. This may need to be supplemented by staples depending on the insulation's adhesion. The mounting rail is placed about 750 to 800 millimeters apart making sure the slots are neatly aligned. A length of straight pipework can be used for this. Allow enough space at the end of the circuits for the pipe to return to the manifold. Take care to keep the correct distance between pipe centres. Once you have established the area of the floor the circuit will be covering, start laying the pipe and take extra care at the return ends when bending the pipework, as kinking the pipe through rough handling will mean having to renew that section of pipework. A serpentine pattern is usually the most convenient to use with this system. When the circuit is completed, ensure you have left enough space for any subsequent circuits to be laid. You may now run the pipework you are working with back to the manifold and connect it. Copy this procedure with the rest of the circuits for a successful installation. A variety of screeds can be used, such as sand, cement or a flowing screed. The screed is typically 50 to 65 mm thick. When laying the screed, care should be taken to ensure that the screed is compacted around the pipe properly. Most screeded floors require 28 days after laying before preheating can begin. However, calcium sulphate screeds may need only 7 days after laying. Check with the manufacturer for specific drying times. Under no circumstances should the UFH be used for speeding up the drying period. If the UFH is being installed when there is a possibility of freezing conditions, suitable antifreeze should be added to protect the pipework. The system will need to be flushed out and refilled prior to operation. When turning on initially, the temperature of the blending valve should be set to the lowest setting. 25 to 30 degrees and run for two to three days before building up the temperature over the next couple of days.